Well, uh, hello, coaches. Uh, welcome uh, to the heart of the coach. Uh, my name is Brian McKenzie. I have the privilege to serve as the director of football for the Fellowship of Christian Athletes in the Midwest region. And I always like to say beyond because uh, what I do goes beyond just the, the Midwest for sure. And we're, I'm thankful for that. And uh, I want to welcome you uh, again to, to the heart of the coach. This is our ninth session of the heart of the coach. And the purpose of this is hoping to encourage and equip you all uh, as coaches to be able to do what God has called you uh, in maybe more effective way. And we do that through having a featured coach. And uh, today's featured coach is my good friend, Robert Wimberly, who is the ex executive assistant coach, uh, co-DC and linebackers coach at Northern Illinois University. Coach Wimberly, welcome to the call today. Hey, thank you very much, Brian. Definitely excited to be around such great men and just be able to share my story with you guys. Yeah, we're, we're excited to hear it, Coach. We're just, just briefly, tell us about your family. Tell, tell, tell us uh, uh, your blessings there of your family. Yeah, I, and I'm, I'm definitely going to do that. But if you don't mind, I always like to just start off in a quick word of prayer, if you're okay you with bet, that, Coach. Brian. Go, go right, right ahead. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you for this opportunity to represent you and be able to share once again with these great men uh, the story of my story and whatever you place on uh, my heart through the questions that Brian asked. I just ask you to bless this time together and bless each man uh, that's listening in their families in your son, Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, uh, you know, my story begins uh, when my wife, I had opportunity to meet her in uh, really 2000. I saw her and um, you know, she just captivated my heart. Um, but we got married in 2004 and that, that's a long story in itself. Um, but through that, uh, it would, a year later, uh, we was able to take in a young lady uh, that was 17 years of age. Her name is Bianca Robinson. And um, she was dealing with some situations in her home. And I was out on the road recruiting. And uh, my wife called me and said, hey, you know, uh, DSS asked uh, me to look at the young lady uh, that we were involved with through our church. And um, from that point, I was okay with it. Um, but the Lord saw otherwise. I thought it would just be a two-week process. Long story short, um, you look 15 years later, uh, she's still with us. Um, and so that was our first child. And that's why I started off with that story, uh, because she's been a true blessing uh, just to see where she's come from. She's a teacher, school teacher, fourth grade. Uh, and I'm so proud of her. Uh, and then my son, his name is uh, Robert Josiah Wimberly. Um, he was born three and a half months premature. Uh, while I was at university at Buffalo. Um, and he was scheduled to be born in February of 2010. He was born October 30th, uh, 2009. Um, but if you see him now, uh, you would not be able to tell uh, that he was born three and a half months premature. So uh, I've seen firsthand uh, how God has been merciful, how God has been faithful. Um, and, you know, um, that has always reminded me of how good God is. So I'm blessed to have a, a beautiful wife once again, going on 16 years, uh, and blessed to have two wonderful children that I'm proud to be their father. Yeah, that's great. Well, what a blessing. Well, Robert, before we get into some more of the heart questions here, just want to ask you this question I've asked a few of our guests is, what's the greatest football game you've been part of and why was it so great? Oh, man, uh, I would say the greatest game would have been 2017. Uh, we played at Baylor at the beginning uh, of the season. Uh, that's when Liberty, I was at Liberty at the time, defensive coordinator, and uh, we were transitioning to FBS. Um, and, you know, just remembering that game, all the behind the scenes, as you coaches know, a lot of times, um, the fans and, and even maybe administration don't know uh, what you're dealing with as far as injuries and maybe situations that's going on. Um, but, you know, for us to start that season, uh, we had some uh, internal things that were going on that Coach Gill had to make some decisions and some young men did not play. And uh, we still went in that game with the mindset that we were going to compete to win. And, you know, the mindset of that team, uh, that preparation of fall camp, uh, and going into uh, Waco, um, I, I, it was a true experience for me to see uh, how these young men were resilient. Um, they believed from the kickoff to the very end. And uh, to come away with that victory 
uh, was a special moment in my career. Yeah, I remember that game. It was a big, big deal. And just remember seeing the exuberance of the celebration and even and also the humility of Baylor and their congratulations of you all. It was a really a, a great game, obviously, to be a part of. Well, well, Coach, why do you coach? What's your why? You know, my why, uh, Brian, is I want to impact young men ages 17 through 23 every day uh, by planting seeds in their lives uh, that will go beyond their time with me. Um, I know at the end of the day, I have four to five years with young men where God has given me the privilege to be an example, uh, to be a model of what a godly man can be. You know, I'm not perfect. No person is perfect. Uh, but as you coaches know, we deal with so many young men that uh, come from backgrounds that really are heartfelt and you really want to find a way to reach them. And I, I think this is the greatest tool that we have as coaches is to be an example uh, every day, you know, not so much speeches and rah-rah, but just living your life in a way that they can observe you uh, over. A lot of times these young men come back to me after they've played for me. Uh, I have more young men call me now uh, about life issues uh, and the thing that encourages me is they say, Coach, you lived it out. And I maybe couldn't reach them like I thought I could when I uh, was coaching them. But to see them reach out to me now uh, is why I think planting seeds is so important. Mm, well, great, Coach. Well, you know, you and I have gotten to really know each other over this past year and spent a lot of good time together uh, each week. And I hear you mentioned the name of a lot of coaches that have influenced you. So name the most, you know, two of the most influential coaches you've worked with and tell us why they've been so influential in your life. You're going to get two. Know, I know you got more. You get uh, two, well, uh, I'm a, two most. Yeah, yeah, you know, that, that, that's tough, Brian. I, I guess I've been blessed <laughs> to work with some great men um, that have really imparted in my life and really took time to help groom me and you know I think the easiest person for me to um, talk about is coach Turner Gill um, special man yeah uh, you know as a young coach you, you know you're always pursuing uh, things that you know you want to win you want to be the best uh, but when you when you encounter a man like Coach Gill and you see how he's able to uh, push you, but also push you about being the best husband you can be, being the best father, and hold you accountable to that. Uh, you know, um, you, you, you become grateful. Uh, and I try not to get emotional. Uh, but as you as you know as you men know about this profession, it's about planting seeds. And you know, I, I've watched Coach Gill be able to handle the pressures of life uh, in front of the masses and still be the uh, same person behind the scenes. Uh, the way he treated his staff, the way he treated people, uh, and still be able to hold you accountable. Uh, he didn't he didn't lighten the load, uh, but he was determined to treat you as a person. He wanted to make sure you knew um, that uh, he respected you, he cared about you. And, uh, you know, I think watching him be able to go through the ups and downs, I was with him at Buffalo, Kansas, and spent the last uh, uh, seven years when I was at Liberty with him. Uh, and I, I watched him very co closely. Uh, he was a man of true integrity at all times. Um, you know, nobody's ever perfect. He was a, he was a person that if he, uh, you know, misspoke, or he made the wrong decision, he would come back to the whole staff or you as a person and say, hey, I, I was I was wrong. And then we would move on. Um, you know, I learned a lot from him. I think the other person uh, I will say is uh, Coach Carl Torbush, uh, who many of us know is a great defensive mind. Uh, you know, I uh, had opportunity to work with him when I was at Kansas. And I just think we developed a great bond uh, when it came to uh, coaching. You know, he's he's another person as a, a sincere person uh, he cares about people he truly cares about his players um, you know just to watch him coach and put his arm around young men even after he's you know yelling at them getting on their case 
uh, but just watching how he never made it be personal. Uh, he always kept it to where that was the football field, but you as a person, I care about you as a person. Uh, you know, to see him do that uh, at the level that he did, I always had respect for him because he, when he, even when he was in the meeting room, he never would talk bad about a player uh, based on what they did in practice. Uh, and I just thought that was so unique. And for him to be as successful as he was, to have that type of mindset, uh, that really helped me in my coaching career. Yeah, great. Thanks for sharing that, Robert. Obviously, uh, we can tell your love for those two men and the impact they've had in your life. And uh, I've seen that firsthand. Well, well, Robert, how does your relationship with, with Jesus practically impact pack your players? What's that look like on a week to week basis? What's, what's your hope that uh, during the week, uh, how your relationship with Jesus impacts your players? You, uh, you know, the, the thing I always try to do is just live it out. Uh, I think that's what young men are looking for is your example every day. Can you be the same person and consistent in how you walk out your faith? And so when, when you do that, Brian, you're able to look for nuggets. Uh, you know, the Lord will show nuggets and of opportunities where you can use biblical principles um, with young men. Uh, you know, I love my young men know if they have an issue, first thing I'm going to ask is, how can I pray for you? Uh, you know, is there anything that you need uh, that me or my wife, Mrs. Wimbo, can pray for you? And it's amazing how young men will open up and say, hey, coach, I need prayer in this area or that area. And then that may lead to me giving them an opportunity to touch on a scripture from the word of God or, or use anything that I can, uh, like I said, from biblical principles. Uh, you know, I, I learned something from, from a wise chaplain. He said, you ask questions, you'll get results. If you always want to just point out things, you, you'll keep them quiet. Uh, and so, you know, that's the thing I look for throughout the day is, you know, I love being able to have my door open uh, in the mornings, even uh, during the season, you know, with my books and just ask them, hey, uh, what have you been reading? And then, you know, they'll often ask me. And then that leads to opportunity for me to, once again, uh, be able to use the biblical principles uh, to try to touch their lives. Great. That's great. Well, uh, Coach, you know, as a college football coach, your schedule can sometimes get crazy busy. It can get hectic. Now, right now it's a little bit different, but normally um, it's pretty crazy, especially during the season. So what do you do during those crazy, hectic times to practically foster your relationship with Jesus? Well, I'm an early bird. Uh, I've been an early bird since I was uh, young. And so for me, um, I have to start my day off with him, uh, no matter in season, out of season, on the road recruiting, you know, at least try to get 30 minutes. Uh, if, I, if it's going well, I'm able to get maybe an hour, 30 minutes to an hour, where I'm able to just spend time uh, you know, study a passage in the Bible or, or read a good book uh, that uh, will equip me or encourage me. And so for me, that daily routine has been beneficial. Uh, when I've strayed away from that daily routine, um, it's been a lot more difficult for me to stay focused, uh, to stay um, the person that I know God wants me to be. Uh, but when I've been able to do that, I've seen myself be able to weather storms much better in my life. So, um, you know, 5.30, I'm normally up looking at the ceiling. Uh, the only problem I have, men, is probably like most of you when I'm on vacation, uh, my wife doesn't like me popping up. Uh, she prefers me to stay laying down and getting some rest. Um, but outside of that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm definitely uh, early, uh, early morning person uh, so I can make sure I can spend time with my Heavenly Father. Great. Well, Coach, um, all of us are kind of cooped up right now, right? So uh, with all this and away from the daily schedule of football in the normal way, um, what's the Lord been teaching you personally? Well, you know, you know, Brian, me and you have opportunity to communicate quite, uh, quite a bit. And for me, it's been more about self-awareness, about my life, areas I can improve as a husband, as a father. Uh, you know, as a brother, I got two siblings, as a son, uh, as a nephew. Um, and, you know, I think what I found out is, you know, this career, I love it. Uh, it's a ministry for me. Um, but 
I have uh, at times uh, pushed other things that are of great value to the side. Uh, you know, spending time communicating on the phone with family members and, and cousins and people that I love very dearly. Um, but you get you get in this rush um, of this career, and sometimes you put those things on hold. And I think taking a step back me being able to go out for walks with my son while he's riding his bike and be able to get on the phone and just tell different loved ones I love them. You know, many have been surprised, double-checking the phone to make sure it's my voice uh, just because, you know, I haven't spoken to him in a while. And, you know, at, at, sometimes you just really realize how your values really have to be in, in the right place and priorities. Uh, and I think that's, for me, as what's really been beneficial about this time. Yeah. All right, here, here, here's another football question, Coach. Um, this fall, September 26th, you're all playing at Iowa, all right? You're up by four, three seconds to go. They have the ball on your 40-yard line. What do you want to do defensively? Oh, we'll definitely be in prevent. <laughs> we'll be in prevent. We'll, we'll you know, uh, we'll – I, I can see us, you know, rushing our three and making sure we take away the arm of the quarterback with our pass rush of our fourth rusher. And, uh, you know, I think this is the the conversation that many staffs have. Do you try to catch the ball or do you knock it down, making sure it hits the ground? You know, I think we'll definitely go over those scenarios. But, you know, uh, definitely that, that'll be our uh, – what, what we would do. Yeah. Well, you know, our buddy Arch McDaniel said he was bringing the house, so I, I don't know. Oh. There. That's... <laughs> uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know if we'll be bringing the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially if you depend on what your personnel is back there, right? So, well, hope no, that yeah. happens. Hope you guys get a chance to go into Iowa and, and be in that situation, and, and we get to watch that uh, lived out. Well, I, um, I want to give some of these coaches here on, here on the call an opportunity to ask some questions. So, if you've got a question for Coach Wimberly, uh, just unmute yourself and uh, fire a question at Coach Wimberly. He's where he, he'll be ready. Hey, Coach. It's Coach Jones from Perspective Charter School. How you doing? I'm doing well, Coach. All right. Um, I thought it was important that you brought up the C and uh, um, the awareness. Us seeing the, um, the documentary of The Last Dance. And I noticed throughout the process of Michael Jordan process, I don't think he realized the process of the seed that he was putting into to the world. And I saw Kobe Bryant actually was one of the beneficiaries of that seed. That being, in your position, how do you keep yourself aware of planting those seeds and other coaches and players around you to keep that process going? Well, that's a great question. Uh, you know, for me, it, it, once again, it starts off with the word. Uh, and then by me standing the word, Coach Jones, it allows me to always look for opportunities to cultivate. Um, you know, I think in this profession, uh, the mindset is, hey, I got to keep pushing. I got to keep proving myself. I got to keep trying to gain uh, promotions and get this job, that job. And if you're not careful, uh, you will lose the reason why you're coaching. You know, a coach is a mentor. A coach is a person that brings somebody along with them. That's what a coach is. You're developing young men. And if you're not careful, uh, sometimes we lose sight of why we do what we do. Um, and so for me, what has allowed me to continue to focus on the seed planting is staying in the Word of God, realizing that football is my tool um, to help young men and anybody I encounter, coaches, parents, um, you know, administration at high schools, um, what are those opportunities and those nuggets that the Lord are, is providing me to plant a seed? And it's not so much a scripture. It's not so much, you know, beating them over the head with the, with the word. It's about those opportunities to say, hey, how can I pray for you? You know, when I hear a secretary tell me oh, I had a rough weekend, oh, how, how was your weekend? What occurred? Oh, my, my, my mother was in the hospital. Well, ma'am, you know, if you feel comfortable, can I pray with you? You know, and then a high school coach sees that, because I've had that happen before, like, man, coach, I ain't never seen a coach really do that. Now it's an opportunity for me to plant a seed. Um, to me, it's everyday life. 
Um, and when you take your time to really say in the morning, Lord, how can you use me? Uh, he will use you to be able to plant those seeds, but you have to be willing and open yourself up to say, Lord, how can you use me today? Hey, Coach. Chris Millette here from Chicago Hope Academy. Um, I have somewhat of a selfish question for you here. Uh, okay. My eldest son is going to be a grad transfer receiver at Northern coming up this fall. He's going to be rooming with Miles uh, uh, Baggett. They were high school okay. teammates as well. Playing yes. for Anthony Sarantino Jr., whose father I played high school football for in North Jersey. So okay. I think it's really orchestrated by the Lord with him heading that way, heading your direction. What's the biggest thing culture-wise he can expect to encounter when he gets on campus and when he ends, enters the, uh, the, meet, the room? Well, you know, I think the, the, the culture question, uh, I can answer that, is he's going to enter a great culture. Coach Hammock uh, has done a great job of um, developing in this last year the culture that we need to be successful. And once again, it doesn't focus on wins and losses uh, like, you know, most programs probably would. It's focusing on four pillars. We talk about integrity, courage, pride, and we talk about trust. And those are the four pillars um, that we talk about every day uh, because at the end of the day, um, we want our young men to be leaders when they leave NIU. Um, and when you focus on those things there, uh, they come in, they're talented. We, we recruit to gain talent. Our goal is, as we continue to develop them as football players, we also develop them as people and men that when they graduate, they can encounter our society and go into the real world understanding that they are leaders, okay? And so we take great pride in that. Uh, we talk about relationships and the value of relationships. And so I would, I would tell you to feel very confident that your son is going to be entering a program uh, that believes in developing the whole person. Great. Good question. Other question? Coach, what are some key verses that you go to to uh, strengthen you? Is there any key oh, verses? Yes, sir. I got them. Uh, get your pens out. <laughs> All right. I, I, I do. I do seven scriptures, one for each day um, that I read every single day. I've been doing this man, uh, going on six, seven years. Uh, on Monday, I, I, um, I go Psalms 37, verse four and five. Um, and that says, you know, I just delight yourselves in the Lord. And he shall give you the desires of your heart. Uh, but verse four talks about trusting in the Lord. Uh, and so I start off on that. On, on Tuesday, uh, I write down Job. I read Job uh, 28, 22. I want to make sure I got my Bible here. Uh, 22 and 28. Job 22 and 28. It says, Thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. And the reason I like reading that verse is just to remind myself that as a coach, I have positive words. My words are powerful. So I want to be careful how I communicate uh, with young men, if it's going to be negative or if I, I know I had a rough practice. This reminds me, you know, as a coach, what I speak, okay, is very powerful to young men and people I encounter, okay. On Wednesday, uh, I do Proverbs 18, 16. It says a man's gift will make room for him and bring him among great people. Uh, and just that, that just helps me in this profession to realize, just be me. Just do me. Don't, don't try, to, try to do things that's out of characteristic. Don't try to always be job searching um, because my gift will make room for me. God has gifted all of us as coaches, and we have to really trust that and know that he has a great plan for us. And then on uh, Thursday, uh, I read Psalms uh, 75, uh, verse 6. It says, promotion comes not from the east nor the west nor the south, but promotion comes from God. And once again, that just reminds me, at the end of the day, God has me. Um, and so I, I always read that on Thursday. On Friday, Isaiah 55, uh, 8 and 9, it says, um, thy ways are not his ways, his ways are not my ways. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are his ways higher than my ways. 
And I like that verse because it reminds me God has the ultimate plan. You know, I think us as coaches, we're, we're so structured that, hey, in five years I need to be here. Ten years I should be a head coach here. You know, I'm going to be a defensive coordinator in the NFL, whatever it may be. But it just reminds me at the end of the day, God has the perfect plan for me. You know, and so that that's always encouraged me. Um, on Saturday, I read Joshua uh, chapter one, uh, you know, and that talks about Joshua, you know, being able to go into the promised land and, you know, just making sure that uh, he stays meditated on the word. So Joshua chapter one, verses one through eight, I would encourage you to read that. Uh, and that's always just reminded me that, you know what, God has some great promises for me. Uh, he has great promises for my family, but I have to continue to be meditated on his word. Uh, and trust in his word and not myself. And then on Sunday, uh, I read Psalms 1. Uh, you know, it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Uh, you know, paraphrasing, but I read that whole chapter uh, because that just encourages me to make sure I keep myself ar around wise people, a good, around good counsel. Um, and so, you know, those are just some scriptures. I have many others, but just to encourage you, uh, another one is Col Colossians 3, 17, uh, Colossians 3, excuse me there, um, and then I, I, I just tell, if you can keep yourself rooted in the word, uh, you know, we all face different storms and, and different things that come, um, but it's amazing how that word of God can definitely encourage you to keep going. Yeah, guys, I hope you caught that. He has a verse that he reads every day. Uh, Monday, it's the same one every Monday, Tuesday, all the way Sunday through Saturday. And I love that because he's living out what he reads on Sunday, which is Psalm 1, verse 2 said, says, but is his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. And by reading that same passage, Every day you're meditating, you're thinking about it. Every Monday, boy, you got this passage, and I would just encourage you. Oh, what a great idea! Haven't heard that, and you hadn't told me that yet, Coach Wimberly. <laughs> I love it. So, uh, and we talk almost every week, so that's yes, that's sir. A new, yeah, very practical, uh, guys. We got, probably got question for time for one more question. If anybody else has a question, Coach, could I get Thursday scripture again? Thursday scripture is Psalms uh, seventy-five, verses uh, six. And I got my Bible because, yeah, for promotion cometh neither from the east nor the west nor the south, but God is a judge. He put it down one and set it up another. Verse 6 and 7, yes, sir. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome, sir. All right, well, one more question here, Robert, for, for, for me to you. Okay. Give us one highlight from this past year. What's a highlight in your life? Man, one highlight on this past year. Uh, you know what? Me and my wife celebrated our 15th uh, anniversary, and uh, I was uh, able to uh, take her to Hawaii uh, uh, based on my uh, Marriott points. Uh, so, you know, all that recruiting and, and you great high school coaches that I get opportunity to go see and gain those points at the Marriott, it paid off, and uh, we was able to have a great time. Uh, Hawaii is a beautiful state. And, uh, you know, just to be able to have 15 years with a wonderful woman, as many of you high school coaches and college coaches that are married know, your wife is the backbone of your of your home. Uh, they have to be very independent and take care of things that, um, you know, you, you a man really should have the opportunity to do. But without career, uh, you know, they have to take the car and do different things unexpected. Uh, I'm, I'm just blessed to have a wife uh, that is willing to be there to support me and me being home these last few weeks to see all that she does, I'll tell you, man, I won't be able to last two hours um, doing the things that she's doing at home. Um, so that's been a great blessing. That's been the highlight, sir. Right. Well, that's great. Uh, well, Robert, thanks so much for being our guest today on the Heart of the Coach. Really appreciate it, brother. And uh, for all you guys on here, to remind you that we got another call this Wednesday, and that's going to be with Tim Horton, who's the running back coach at Vanderbilt University. On Thursday, we, and that'll be at noon Central Time. On Thursday at 11 a.m. Central Time, we'll have Kurt Warner. He's currently with the NFL Network, but of course, a Hall of Fame uh, quarterback. And we'll get a chance to hear from a player's perspective and the impact coaches have had on his life. And then Friday, we'll have uh, Jeff Grimes, who's the offensive coordinator 
at uh, BYU. So another great week in store. Again, Robert, thanks for being with us, brother. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, men. Guys, you have a great day, and we look forward to seeing you later in the week. God bless you. God bless you, Brian. Take care. Thank you.